Hey, what's happening everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache, Tim here, and I've got a brand new video for you. Welcome to part two of the remastered What If Deku Had 100% OFA. Please sit back and relax because you are in for a treat. With that out of the way, let's get this story going, shall we? A few days had passed by, and when Midoriya got back to school, he did his normal school subjects. Then in the afternoon, it was hero training. Today's hero training was team activities. The teams were chosen at random. The first group was Midoriya and Uaraka, versus Ida and Bakugo. Now a quick note, Bakugo had not seen one of Midoriya's full power punches. If he had, I'm sure these events would have gone differently. Bakugo and Ida were playing the villains, while Midoriya and Uaraka were playing the heroes. Midoriya and Uaraka made a plan. Midoriya knew that Bakugo would most likely go after him. He also knew that using his quirk on Bakugo would likely kill him. When Midoriya and Uaraka entered the building, Bakugo came right at them with explosions. He was aiming to take Deku down. At the very start of this, Bakugo asked Ida if Deku really had a quirk. Ida told him that it had destroyed a large amount of the old city. Bakugo didn't believe that little Deku had that much power and was down to attack him. While Bakugo was attacking and chasing Deku around, Deku was trying to think of a way to fight back. Nothing he did worked well against him. Bakugo was now adapting and changing his fighting style so that Deku could not counter him. They eventually found themselves in the same situation as in the anime. Deku powered up only the tip of his pinky. It twitched and created a shockwave more powerful than that of the anime. The pressure of the twitch also caused a sideways shockwave slamming Bakugo into a wall, knocking him out. A few hours later, Bakugo woke up not remembering what happened in class that day. All Might was standing at the base of the bed. He told Bakugo he would inform him another time. For now, he should go home and get some rest. Bakugo went home, and that night, he dreamt of what happened. He saw Midoriya all buff like All Might, and he saw himself like a second-place medal. Midoriya felt really bad for what he did to Bakugo. He thought he would be able to just send the attack up. He didn't account for any sideways pressure. Midoriya was extremely worried about using his quirk on anyone. He had to learn to control it, and soon, he almost killed Bakugo. Class went on as usual for the next few weeks. Midoriya was able to control his output slightly better. He mainly trained to power up and maintain it, and then trying to keep the power active while decreasing the amount of time he was using it. Now was finally time for the USJ. The class suited up and headed out. Midoriya was in a makeshift suit, as his old one kept tearing at the slightest use of his quirk. The class took the bus to the USJ, where 13 began to explain what they would be doing. Eraserhead was standing to the side. All Might seemed to have been running late. And just then, they saw a portal open, and dozens began to walk out. That's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, there's a little bit of housekeeping I want to do. First, We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing pleasures. All the information you'll need is right below in the description. So please feel free to check out all the other incredible content our team creates. Second, on behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details are also in the description. That's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have an amazing day. And as always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and stay awesome. This has been Tim. Mustache out.